It's the Friday Flex edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time to take a look at what the newspapers have for us today. And let's start with The Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with mm, Nigeria's drug crisis hits 500 billion naira worth of seizures yearly. And that's a big story here. And the full stories can be found on page, pages 4 and 5 of The Guardian newspaper. On top you have... After $800 million palliative, FG suspends subsidy, cites wrong timing. Yesterday, we were all, you know, surprised to hear that, you know, the subsidy removal that was targeted for June of this year has been suspended by the federal government. In, indeed, it is one of the stories we'll be taking a look at mm. today on our hot topics. And as you go further on that newspaper, The Guardian, you find... Uh, APC crisis, Lukman drags Adamu to court over alleged brief breach of party constitution. That story is on page six. And then you have Malami Knox reps says claims of illegal $2.4 billion oil sale falls. Well, that is a very hot, hot topic there, Nyango. Uh, well, I don't know uh, if they will probe any further because if it is not false, that means uh, uh, a lot of people must have shared in the cake and it will be difficult to bring them to book. In Nigeria, a lot of things happen and we don't hear anything about it anymore. I'm thinking what still happens to the pensions guy, uh, Mena. I'm thinking what happened to the um, accountant general mm. uh, that stole uh, about 80 billion or 120, uh, depends on what it is, uh, Naira. Billion. 120 billion, or even if it's 80 billion Naira. Uh, if you calculate in your head, uh, as a, an average Nigerian, you know how many millions go into a billion naira, and then you're having 120. Is that not poverty mentality? Yeah, I'm go you know that the Why oil someone... sector is shrouded in secrecy. It's been for a long time, and so many people have been trying to break into it and shed more light to the activities of that ministry. But uh, we'll, we'll take Will they shed more light? Mm. Well, once you get there, the battery to your torchlight dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. At the bottom, you have a rider Sudan crisis confusion. Logistic hurdles trail evacuation. Details of that on page three of the Guardian newspaper. Okay. Maybe we'll move on to Daily Independent now. Uh, Daily Independence also has its own stories. Uh, companies working for foreign carriers quitting Nigeria. Uh, you have under that same headline, uh, Emirates consultants exist, exits, declares workers redundant. Stakeholder urges ticket sales in dollars to stop job cut. That's still problems in the aviation industry as we're seeing. Uh, why federal government made U-turn on fuel subsidy removal by June? You can see that story on page 29 of the Daily Independent. Um, a lot of us were not really, really surprised because we knew it's okay. We thought it was going to be just a gimmick and all that. The timing really was bad, but they knew it from the beginning and they still went ahead and said it. Well, <laughs> governors ask Buhari to present new revenue sharing formula to National Assembly. And that is like 30 days to going. That's on page <laughs> 7. Ebony commissions 36 billion naira airport offers free flights for four weeks. I just might be traveling. Ebony State is offering free <laughs> flights for four weeks. And I'm, it's a very commendable one. Yesterday we were talking about the governor of Cross River State. One of the things he said he was going to deliver was a super highway from Calabar to Obudu. Uh, which will have Wi-Fi, which will have a lot of things. He said very beautiful things. Mm. Till date, I'm not sure we've seen a, a kilometer. Are you from Mbonyi, by the way? No, 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 I'm from Cross River State. But so that I, so I know free, free flight, is it for everyone or uh, just Ebony? Well, if you, if you decide to land in Ebony, I'm very sure it's going to be free for you. I but see. even if it's not free, it will be so subsidized because they need traffic in that place. I haven't read up on the story, but I saw flights taking off and landing in the Bonny airport and it is very commendable I say I must mm. say so uh, they they the cross river one for mm. eight years we have not seen I just know he cleared cocoa farms and uh, yam farms cassava farms and let the place just stay like that nothing has I hope been the done farmers were compensated 
Ah, uh, well, that's story for the gods. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have homicide. Fresh trouble for Doguwa as court asks Kano uh, AG to prepare charge against him and others. That's on page six. Then, overconfidence worked against opposition in 2023 election, uh, says Buhari. Overconfidence in what? Well, overconfidence in the system, maybe, <laughs> that the system was going to work, and then it didn't work. Federal government of Nigeria security safe, risk-free investment opportunities. Okay. So let's go to the top of that newspaper. Uh, that is the uh, Daily Independent newspaper. We have uh, no stolen 48 million barrels of crude oil what 2.4 billion that's according to malami uh, buhari boast of uh, facilitating recruitment of 60,000 soldiers and others the story is there he says terrorists are being subdued okay so when we call terrorists we need to define what terrorists are and what terrorism is and what they do they are being subdued. I don't know if the average Nigerian will say the same thing. So those are uh, the major headlines on uh, the Daily Independent. All right. So the next newspaper to look at is the Daily Trust. And Daily Trust leads with Tinubu settles for Akmabio Barao, a Senate president and deputy. The writers there to convey decision to National Working Committee, other contenders meet APC governors, says let's work together on National Assembly leadership. North can't be second fiddle, uh, that's what the former governor has said. Uh, that's the northern former governor. And then consultations ongoing for speaker, deputy speaker positions. So Tinubu finally settles for Akbabio. You know, the off-the-press uh, guest we had yesterday just kept marketing Akbabio. Mm. And <laughs> <laughs> who knows whether they watched us and uh, the marketing paid off. He should come and pay us something well, for that opportunity we, to we market didn't, We his didn't coin. market with him. He marketed. That's it. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He marketed. Mm. And we made the mistake of not collecting money for that marketing. <laughs> um, all right. So on top of that, you have presidency to youth, you can relocate abroad for better opportunities. You can relocate abroad for better opportunities. Femi Adeshino was um, uh, heard saying that, that you can relocate, to uh, re relocate abroad as long as you don't go there and do manual jobs. Um, well, what, let's what a response. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about that. We're just, just finishing. Yeah. <laughs> well, federal time. government suspends fuel subsidy removal. You mentioned that. It's also on the other newspapers. And federal government says no vaccination as poultry farmers lose 3.4 million birds to flu. This is not good news. At all. Eggs are already on the, the cost of eggs are already astronomically high mm. you buy egg for three thousand naira for a crate two thousand five depending on where you're buying it two thousand seven hundred and so with this kind of bird flu and the God chicken forbid, itself what could happen the chicken itself that mm -hmm. you're going to buy and you know that some of these things funny as it may it also affects relationships you know uh, because someone is trying to, you know, be in the good books of a girl, for instance, mm. and then <laughs> you take the girl to an eatery, and then when you finish eating <laughs> what you want to buy, they tell you a price for the chicken that you had calculated in your head that is going to be a certain way, mm. and you find out that at the end of the day, you're just sweeping for the people <laughs> because you can't pay. The girl will never come back. Of course you know, not. But, you know, as funny as, as it is, it affects a lot of things. You can't take your family out because you can't afford it anymore. You can't take relationships that mostly in Nigeria begin in uh, social places like that, like the eateries, cannot happen anymore because you can't afford it anymore. So, yeah, we should see to uh, a lot of things to make sure that they don't have ripple effects that will, 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 will be detrimental to us. All right. Well, you have more headlines there. Tanker explosion kills 13, injured many in Joss. Mm. I mean... This is one story I am just not happy about. Have you seen those tankers on the roads? They are so scary. I hate seeing them on the roads. Uh, there was a time, I believe, in, in, in Lagos when the government uh, made it 
illegal for them to ply the roads uh, same time as normal vehicles. Mm -hmm. I think they, 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 they limited their movement to 11 p.m. because they had caused so many tragic accidents mm -hmm. in Lagos. Many people were trapped at some point on, was it not Ojodibega Road? Yeah. Somewhere there close to uh, 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 the... Um, oh, Tedola Bridge. Thank you very Tedola much. Bridge. Many vehicles were burnt, people's burnt in their vehicles. Very horrific. And so um, to see that this has happened in Jaws, 13 people killed mm. right there and then in one accident is no joke. Let's hope that all across the country that governments will make sure that these vehicles that are very deadly do not ply same time. They should not be on the roads during the daytime. And then we don't know what we can even say to the people because as we speak right now, there are, uh, I'm sure, close to a thousand uh, when you're going to Ojodubega. So between Ojodubega and the toll gate, as they call it, uh, you could have up to like, like 500 or at least 300 standing there. So they've been trying to move since all night and some of them slept there so if you tell them to move at 11 o'clock will the road even be free enough for them to move at 11 o'clock because those ones moved in the night and they're still there this morning so will you arrest them if the law were in place or for instance will you arrest them that they're moving in the morning when you didn't make available the road for them to pass so while we're looking at punishing the people for uh, for not keeping the law for breaking the law we also should be looking at uh, why they are breaking the law as well. Because like they say, you're catching me for roadworthiness. Mm. And then I'm supposed to drive my car in a road that is not worthy of mm. my car. So, so the car may not be roadworthy, but it's a road car worthy. Uh, and so for the that, road. So that's, that's the thing. We should look at both ways. Uh, well, there is the more. Um, my administration recruited 60,000 soldiers. That's Buhari. We're still on the daily trust. And then just below that, you have girl eight tests HIV positive after mother's boyfriend raped her. That story can be found on page 20. You know, Nyambu, we're talking, we'll be talking yes. about child abuse prevention uh, this uh, Friday because this April is the month for the child abuse prevention. And this story is, is just horrific. It's heartbreaking, very heartbreaking. Raping. Time. Yeah. an eight-year-old child. Mm. Uh, why would you even do that? Uh, it's not as if you were sex-starved because you're the, mother, the mother... Then you're dating the mother. So what, what are you looking for in an eight-year-old that you didn't find in the mother? It's, it's just terrible. Pedophiles are... I don't you know, know, one of the things we, one of the questions I'm going to ask uh, resource persons as resource person as we take a look at this is uh, let's assess government's effort mm. in uh, creating deterrent measures to predators, mm. sexual predators, pedophiles, such as this animal, beast, that raped this eight-year-old. What? Because if these measures are there and implemented, and I hope they are there and being implemented, those, many of those who have the tendencies, mm. the perverts who would see a child, an eight-year-old child who has not formed anything and want to have sex with her, such people would have a rethink. And you know, there was a time many years ago, I think that was in 2008, 2006, 2007, 2008, there about, when almost on a daily basis, you would open the newspapers and you see and cases, you see cases yeah. of sexual abuses of children, children few months old, there was one case, a woman, a wife, narrated how her two-month-old baby was sexually abused by her, her father. That's her own husband. Yes. Nyamgo, I kid you not, I became scared at the thought of having daughters. And that is the story or the story of many mothers out there. Because the girl child has become an endangered species in this world that we live in. Yeah, but um, we should also know uh, that... It goes both ways. There are some people who, who have been damaged in adult life because that's men mm -hmm. because of what was done to them by, by some women that were in their life. Most times, it's the maids in the house, mm -hmm. you know, that do do all sorts of things and all that. So we just 
need to be careful, we need to be prayerful because we can't rule that out and yeah. we, yes, we, we need a lot of things to be done. But for the physical things that we can see, for those that we can catch, we need to use them as an example mm -hmm. to uh, deter others that might want to do the same thing and uh, to stop them in their tracks uh, if they have any, any thinking about that. The, the, the worrisome thing is that, who knows, if after we are talking here and we are hoping that a law will be made or there will be drastic me measures taken against these people, mm -hmm. that being a pedophile will now become a right. Because there are people who have already started advocating that they'll be given this right. That, they were born that, like that, that. Is, that is that is their own way of expressing their their desires. So you can't take that right away from them. <laughs> and now rights, the things that were supposed to be psychiatric cases are becoming rights. Somebody tells you I'm a transracial. That means I'm in a black body, I'm a white person, <laughs> or I'm in a... <laughs> or that I identify yes. as a wolf. Yes. Some say I'm non-binary. Who does that? Uh, you're either a woman or a, uh, or a man. And they say they are, they are non these. You cannot... Some schools in America right now, as we speak, have removed the pronoun he, he or, or she. He or she, yeah. So they or uh, they be. So what... what? <laughs> you know, I'm happy we've not started having that discussion in Nigeria yet. I hope we don't get to that. Well, there are a lot of things we are copying that we should not copy. There are a lot of things. There, there. If you talk, they will tell you you're homophobic. You, they you're will tell this. you you are this and that. But I, I obey the laws of nature. <laughs> so when yeah. I'm talking, I'll talk nature. I'll talk God, and you can't separate God and, and nature. I talk nature. Nature made a man. Nature yeah. made a woman. And then you're telling me that I must believe that what you have chosen to call yourself a man if you're a woman or call yourself a woman if you're a man, it must be in the curriculum. You teach it to our children. You do a lot of things and you say, I should accept it. Do it. If, you, if it works for you, do it. Yeah. If you don't but break don't the laws, don't on force someone it on me. Else. Don't force it on me. You know, that's the thing I've discovered with uh, some of these people who have moved from the natural, normal ways of doing things they then become very sensitive yeah. and they become very defensive and every little thing you say they take offense and then it becomes it becomes a thing of you know hatred and just like you would I, i'm careful i'm i'm, I'm choosing my words <laughs> yeah, even I as see, i speak you can, can you imagine i'm choosing my words because i don't want to be uh, dragged for whatever though if i'm dragged i will not see the dragon i don't i'm not doing much, so much on social media but Nature remains nature supreme. Remains nature. Okay, be, before we, if we can have time for the nature newspaper, because you've just mentioned, I, I'd like to just comment on this. Tinubu settles for Fabio Barau as Senate President and Deputy. And for me, I think it's a disgusting kind of thing. We should have. We should have separation of powers. We should have the executive. We should have the legislature. We should have the judiciary. Judiciary, and then it is the president elect or the president, even if he's, he's the president, mm. that will tell you who he wants to be the Senate president or the deputy Senate president. He will pick the person he wants. And then tomorrow you tell me there will be checks and balances. Mm -hmm. You tell me there, there will be someone who will hold him by this, by this sleeve. If he does wrong, you, it's just my boy, go and do this. And you're a rubber stamp. Rubber stamp. So the National Assembly that is saddled with the responsibility of making laws for this nation, cannot choose their own leaders. It's disgusting, as far as I'm concerned. And then, okay. No, go ahead. And then Shen, Femi Adesino says you can relocate abroad for better opp opportunities. Like, do your worst, nothing, nothing spoiled. As mm -hmm. far as you are going to be a good person, go away. People are looking for others from other countries to come. And our people, instead of saying, uh, be patient with us. These are things we have done. If you must go, but help us like this. We want to make our country better. You say you can't go. And that's you know, the same because man. Because in trying to address this Jaguar syndrome that many are crying against, saying the brain drain mm -hmm. is becoming so much and that, you know, knocking the present administration. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what led to him saying, well, you can go abroad uh, if you have opportunities to do so. Uh, in future, you're going to come back to Nigeria a better person. But ensure that when you go, you do not go there to do manual jobs and all that and all that. And... Um, 
Well, you, you remember, that you remember he said really. that whatever this administration has failed in, the administration didn't promise it because it's the supporters of the present administration or the president that may have uh, given those uh, promises. promises. So they shouldn't blame this administration. Who, who does that? Okay, this administration promised us security. Uh, okay, now we've heard that terrorists are subdued anyway. <laughs> they promised us. Yeah, I'm good. Let's go to the <laughs> next <laughs> news headline. Why? I, Let's go to the next newspaper. <sighs> okay, mm, well. To save our mental health. Yeah, yeah well. Uh, Nature newspaper, maybe you just take that. Nature newspaper and let's see what's on Nature newspaper. Nature newspaper has a story. Oh, All right. Oh, uh, well. Oando champions energy transition in transportation takes delivery of electric, electric buses. buses. Well, maybe that's the way to go because everybody has been talking about PPP, private uh, partnership with the government, uh, to get things done. Maybe more involvement, like Oando has taken this step, mm -hmm. will make things uh, good for us. Electric cars, electric buses, good. Mm. That would be good um, if we have enough power to support these electric vehicles <laughs> <laughs> it would have been good yeah. because you want to protect nature yeah, one day uh, off one day on mm. because uh, you can't charge them there's no place to charge mm -hmm. them so on top you have tomato farmers lose 1.5 billion naira to disease nabg blames climate change oh wow mm. one of the biggest forests we have in the world was in cross river state uh, where we also have a uh, the cross river gorillas that are only 250 in the world now and they are only found in that place but now the logging that is going on there and we were supposed to be making money green energy money from from uh, united nations and all that but the logging that is going on there the lucrativeness of that business uh, they are destroying the entire when forest. When you say logging, what, what does that mean? I don't Cutting down the trees, oh, using the tree trees felling. for it, they fell the trees and all that. So mm. I don't know how, how, how disciplined we are in sticking to the plan to uh, make sure that we, 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 we have this green energy, we stop uh, this logging, we continue to have fresh air from our forest and all that. Yeah. We need to be deliberate about it. We have to be. Federal government extends deadline for fuel subsidy removal. Uh, Ipman Hills action. Okay, that's everywhere uh, on our newspapers. Um, then we have uh, federal government stakeholders push for rubber sector revitalization. Oh, that means the di diversification of the economy. That would be good. Mm -hmm. AFDB lists Nigeria others among most vulnerable to climate risk. Wow. That is what is being said. That's from Nation, Nature News. Then maritime industry large enough to engage youth. And that's according to Nimasa. You find that story also on the Nature News newspaper. Okay, well, um, that's the much we can take on uh, the newspaper review as it is, of the press we call it. And uh, we do hope, you, you, you can read up on all the stories that we've talked about yes. here on the pages of the newspaper, but that's how far we can go. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll take our hot topic number one. Stay with us. <laughs> 